Hello everyone, welcome to Armakey Reptiles. This is my third video, moving on from the introduction video and then a little bit about the Royal Pythons in the second video. So, I just want to start by saying a massive thanks to everybody that's subscribed. I really appreciate it. The encouragement I've had from the comments and stuff has been spot on, so thank you very much to everybody who's taken the time to do that. Thank you to Paul Milner at Urban Constrictors. He recently done a video where he promoted my channel a little bit and showed off some snakes that he had from me as part of our trade that we had done. He had three off me and I had one cracker off him. And he just showed off those snakes and talked a little bit about my channel. So thanks very much, Paul. I really appreciate that, bud. And Gavin at Ball CU, he also gave me a mention on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks a lot, Gavin. I Again, I appreciate it mate, it means a lot. And everybody else that subscribed and commented. Um, there's a couple of other YouTubers. You've got SPR Python, Matt Cutter. Uh, thank you buddy for your help and support. And um, TA Exotics, he also uh, subscribed and commented. So thanks Adam, I think it's Adam. I haven't met you yet mate, but hopefully it won't be too long. And anybody else commented and subscribed I really really appreciate it so moving on to today's video what I'm gonna do is show the setup and the basic where this where the Royal Pythons are kept then here what the enclosures are like what the parameters are in terms of temperatures and humidity going from the the warmer end to the cooler end the ambient temperatures of the room the equipment I use to maintain those conditions so thermometers thermostats, heating, uh, what heating elements I use and what heats the actual room as well as the, the racks then. I'll talk a little bit about the racks and I will also comment on a few of the racks I've used in the past because I've used several different racks um, and I haven't changed because I don't like the ones I'm using, it's mainly because I'll see something different and I want to give that a go because I want to gain the experience where I've used the tools that are available on the market and then I can select the ones I like best and the ones that I think work best for me. So there's racks, I won't get into substrate because substrate is a whole other video on its own. I've tried several, you know, Lignocell, Paper, Megazorb, Tropichip, Reptichip and Again, there's, there's quite a few things to cover in just that, so I'll do another video on that, but today it's going to be my room. I'll go into a little bit about how I built the room and what I did to ensure that it's bulletproof and that the snakes are going to be absolutely kept in spot on conditions. And yeah, I'll just, that's going to be it. Racks, enclosures, I might chuck in a few other little bits while we're whipping around, just if I come across something I think that I should chuck in. I will, um, but over, you know, over the. I'm not saying this is going to be basically all opinion-based information. So this isn't like a clear, you know, this is how you should do it. This is, this is what I do, and I want to just share it with you. Loads of people are going to do it differently. So you know, check multiple sources for your, you know, research from multiple sources. Then, but I've come up with what works best for me. Like with regards to temperatures, some people are gonna keep them warmer than me. I choose to do things a little bit differently because I haven't had problems as such in the past, but I think the problems I've had, whether it could have been um, you know, prevented by what I do now, I don't know, but it's sort of data that I've collected and it's not proven, but if it's working well, then that's the way I'm gonna keep it. And like the saying goes, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I'll share it all with you guys anyway. But thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy it. So here we are guys, this is my snake room. We got four walls and a ceiling, super exciting. Um, I'm gonna try and breeze through this pretty quick because I have got quite a lot to show. So I'll start off with ambient temps. So this room, I like to be heated um, to 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you that use Celsius, it's about 
I think is about 26, 27. Um, but yeah, that is done by an underfloor heat kit, which is under these floor tiles here, which is controlled via a thermostat. Um, this thermostat is set to 80 LUT and it's reading 82. And that's how that's controlled. It's Wi-Fi enabled, which is why I'm able to get my logo on the screen. I can control the temps when I'm out and about from my phone, so I can knock it up and down when I'm, you know, remotely then, uh, which is handy. But the main the main reason I wanted that feature was so that I can at least see what the temperature is reading if I'm away or out. So especially in the summer when it gets a bit warm, or in the winter when it's cold, you know, I can just be it's peace of mind then, so it's a good feature. Um, I've got a Home Medics air purifier there, which <clears throat> basically it moves the air around a little bit in here. It acts like a fan. I'll turn it up and down, but I just have it set to one. It's got filters inside which purify the air. Um, when the filters are new, it's actually quite noticeable that the air is quite clean. Um, ah, most important bit of kit, Alexa. Can't, can't be cleaning snakes without any tunes, so <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's Alexa and there's my racks. So these are ARS hybrids. Starting off with the adult rack, we have a 7030 hybrid. Lovely racks, so they're the smoothest running racks I've ever used. Um, the tubs are thick quality plastic, very robust, very smooth surface which is ideal for cleaning because as you know you guys that keep snakes the urates when they stick in the corners and stuff it can stick like cement so it doesn't take much to get it off these um they got a 16 ounce deli cup holder which is nice the snakes can't knock it over um the beauty is i'm not cleaning ceramic water bowls like i used to spend a lot of time doing and if these bowls get soiled i will dispose of them in recycling they do get recycled um, I, they're not one use. I will rinse them out and put them back if they're clean still. Um, but as soon as they get soiled, they go and I'll put a fresh one in. And according to the box, these are actually a biodegradable plastic. So not too bad for the environment, which obviously we all need to be mindful of the environment. So that's a good thing. I uh, still use hides with my girls. It's a lovely pastel pied girl there. She's going to be bred to a fire entry pied. Um, just an example of my temperatures then. So I know this tub's been out of the rack, so it's not going to be exactly the same, but you know, 81 to 82 there, and 86, 87, there we go, 88, there's the magic 88. That's the temperature I like my warm spots at. Um, I watched a video years ago of Marcus Jane, um, and he said about the magic 88, and I have come across a couple of other guys that have said, it's not necessary for us to be keeping snakes, you know, up in the 90s, and I kind of agree with them from experience. Um, you know, as long as you're maintaining a good ambient room temp. Another good thing with these racks is the removable tops. Disinfect that down, get it wiped and cleaned easy. Uh, you're not stretching and breaking your back trying to get the tops cleaned. Um, with the JVK racks, I used to have a, a window mop. I used to get in there to clean it with, which worked, you know, worked well. And JVK racks are awesome. I miss the secret work tops very much, which is why I've got that, which folds away. Um, but yeah, I had to have something because I love that work top. This is the hatchling version. These are quite big tubs, to be fair. Quite big for a hatchling. They take the eight, eight ounce deli cup. So same thing applies. I'd say if you've got new hatchlings in these, you'd want uh, one or two hides in there just because they're going to be a bit overwhelmed with the slightly more established hatchlings like this one. They'll get on all right without a hide. Um, no problem at all. Just show you the heat strip. So it's a four inch heat strip lip, and that's the same on both adult and hatchling racks. Um, I don't see the need for any wider heat strips, but it depends on your ratio of ambient room temp to hot spot. Like say if you're in a colder room, you're gonna to want to cover more of the surface area of the enclosure with a bigger hot spot to maintain that cooler end. 
because we're dealing with cold-blooded animals and they they do rely on the environment for the the heat then to regulate their blood for them to be able to carry out certain bodily functions whether that be digestion um breeding stuff to do with breeding anything like that they need to be able to move they call it thermal regulation so they thermal regulate to cooler warmer parts to keep their functions going as they should be this is a different type of rack again this is a harp exotics um you got a thicker a thicker wall which is well insulated ideal for uh, being in a house where the room temperatures might not be what mine are like if we look at a celsius here 27.7 i don't think there's going to be many houses that are maintained at that all year round there might be and you might have an oil filled radiator or something like that which is fine you know um but if you have got a colder room i would recommend getting something like this because it holds the heat a lot better they come with um a larger hot spot so you're going to be able to regulate that gradient a bit better your, your cooler end is going to be a touch warmer which is good um i'll just give you a quick sneak peek at this guy it's a little sunset nice copper color not just brown guys he's he's got some orange there um pop him back i'm trying to breeze through it a bit now um ream thermometer this i've used it's been such a reliable bit of kit from amazon therm pro it records humidity temperature which can be changed from fahrenheit to celsius it records highs and lows on both temperature and humidity it's got a backlight um obviously i think i said you can change it from fahrenheit to celsius but the best thing about this is it records highs and lows uh, so if you wanted to use it for an incubator you know you got all time or you can set it to 24 hours so it would give you daily feedback of the highs and lows that this thing's recorded which i think is brilliant when it arrived it had magnets on the back which was really good because i was able to stick it to my racks uh, but <laughs> one day i came in and it was on the floor and what had happened is the the heat in the room has softened the adhesive it's let go and the, the magnets were still on it but i just said it anywhere now really it's, um you know i'm set up to where i need it so as you can tell it's quite humid in here today 57 percent it's probably about 40 in the house but that's how I like it because I'm sh I'm convinced that snakes breed better when it's humid. Um, scales for keeping track of our snake's weight, that's important. Um, most important bit of kit, infrared temp gun. If you're keeping snakes, in my opinion, if you're keeping snakes and you haven't got one of these, you need to get one. They're only about 12, 15 quid on Amazon or eBay. Um, but, you know, you can gun very little difference there. Look, we got bottom front tub 28 sorry 82.3 top 82.5 so pretty bang on there um uh what else can i talk about so that's thermometer infrared temp gun scales racks heat panels tubs deli cup holders right thermostats these are my favorite thermostats you can lay you can set it to tell you what it's doing so this is my 1065 rack and it's doing bottom six levels set point 90 i don't mind keeping my hatchlings a little bit warmer than the adults uh, keeps them feeding well and obviously we haven't got to worry about breeding issues with the young ones so 90 is where i like them um tells us it acts as a thermometer so that is the feedback of what it's reading now so it's 89.9 status that's the power output so we've got 13.5 percent 14 percent um another good feature on these is it gives you a uh, feedback of temperatures like again same with the the room thermometer that i showed you so it's giving you feedback of your highs and lows then of your temperatures um so that's bottom six and then i've got another one there which is top seven so spot on love the my favorite farm stats although i still use the good old hobby stat pulse stats these are bulletproof and yeah they'll be my go-to thermostats any any day um never had any issues with them and sort of in all the years i've been doing this never had a thermostat fail really i don't think touch wood anyway uh 
I think that's it guys so I'm gonna wrap it up there because it's getting on for it's over 10 minutes now so if you've got any questions though about stuff I've shown you then you know fire them over and I'll do my best to answer again this is all my opinion this is what I do it's not I'm not telling you to do what I do but it's worked for me and I'm not going to change it um, it's going well but uh, thanks for watching guys anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch up with you all soon cheers Bye.